Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So first off, I'd like to thank everybody who's been sharing out all of these videos on social media and sending comments in the comment box below. Really appreciate it. Now in the last video within this forensic series in Python, we wrote an application that found bot activity, non-human activity on the blockchain. And what we did is we manually parsed those for sandwich attacks. What we're gonna do in this one is we're gonna remove the manual component but we are going to dial into sandwich attacks so that most of what we get back, maybe 90%, actually will be a front running or a sandwich attack. We're gonna split this up into two things. The first part of this video is just gonna be a very quick high level overview of what's going on within this main function and then the output for people who know Python and then they can dig into the code which is in the link below. And then we'll dive a little deeper into all the changes for those new people and then what you can do is grab the code and dig in a little deeper on that. So to start this off, we have functions in this one. So it's no longer just a script with no functions. We actually have functions. So we start off with the main function and within the main function, we run everything we need to run. You'll see it's pretty short. So the first thing we're doing is we're running the grab transactions function which is the same as the functionality in the last one, just very small differences. We'll take a look at that. And then it runs the find bots, which finds all of the bots within the transaction. So that's all pretty much the same. We just encapsulated them within functions that we call, and they don't need any uh, arguments passed into them because they're all running off those global dictionary variables. Now the new functionality that's completely different after that once we run find bots, we get all our possible sandwich attacks dictionary. We check if that exists. If it does exist, we find a sandwich. And we do that within the find sandwich functionality that you can check out in the code. It's pretty simple. Essentially what we're doing is we're parsing out gas values and we're using the logic of how the sandwich attack works to get rid of all the normal bot activity. Once it does all of that, it prints out I found a delicious sandwich and it uses colors in this one so that way we can find it easily on the command line. So if we took a look at the output here, we run it, we get one bot in the first one and it gives us a transaction hash we can look up. We get one bot in the second one and a transaction hash. And then we run a couple more times, we didn't get anything. And then we get three bot transaction hashes, and two of them appear to be sandwich attacks, and if you look them up, they actually are. And it's printed out in green and orange, so you can see those right away, and all the bot activity is just in this white. So if you understand Python, dig into it in the link below and check it out, and you should be golden, or continue on if you wanna know a little bit more detail, or if you're new to Python, the rest of the video is for you. So if we dig into the code, I arranged it so that these functions that are called, the code is in the same order above so we can easily go through it. So let's hop up into the grab transactions after we look at the imports. So at the very top, we are importing Colorama now, which gives us the ability to put colors on the command line. Then we're doing our variables. Everything is the same here, except that we have a TX lookup variable and a possible sandwich variable here now. They're both dictionaries. Now the possible sandwich is that value that we take the output of our program last time to send in to check if it's a sandwich attack. And the TX lookup is something that we create in addition that just has the transaction hash and the gas value that we need to calculate things to find out if it's a sandwich attack. Now we create that within our grab transactions and that's the only change to this code, right? We create a TX lookup that has the transaction hash, and that is a list value this time. It's not the two gives you the from value, it's the transaction hash gives you the two value in index zero, the from value in index one, and the gas value in index two. So now we can reference all those values with the transaction hash, and we create these in here. So first we grab our block, set it to our transaction with TX the same way we did last time, nothing changed. But now when we check our two from pairs, we do everything the same in both of these if statements, but we also create a TX lookup that has the transaction hash that gives us the two, the from, and the gas price. That's it, that's the only thing that changed in all of that code, right? We have extra data now. 
We're gonna pass that extra data into the find box function, which uses the TX lookup this time instead of the pair of just the to and the from, but it does it the same way. It's looking for two sets of the to from values using index zero, which is the to value within that TX lookup. And we just named that pair, it has all three of those values. Index zero, again, is the two and index two is the gas price. And we're gonna associate that with the transaction hash and our output goes into that possible sandwich. So it's pretty much the same as last time, except we have to use these indexes now because we're indexing into a list of values. So, you know, once we call that transaction hash and we get in here, it's no longer just one value. We have to say index zero and index two, which as you know from up here, index zero is two, index two is the gas. So we create that possible sandwich and we send that possible sandwich now into our find sandwich where it does its magic. So what is fine sandwich doing? Well, it's going to calculate things with gas prices to figure out what's more likely to be a sandwich attack based on the fact that usually bots calculate the gas that they need based on the current gas utilization and price. There's a metric and an API you can call into. So within a block, they're likely using the same exact gas price but we know that our sandwich attack needs a higher gas price and a lower gas price to sandwich in our victim. So we can check for that. Now, the way that we're gonna check for that is we have our all bots and our duplicate bots. And our all bots and our duplicate bots are gonna check, hey, so does this gas price already exist within our possible sandwich? And if it does, we'll dump it in our duplicate bots database. If it doesn't, we'll add all the unique ones that are the first time we saw them within our all bots. Then in order to create our list of sandwiches, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop down here and we're gonna say, okay, well, if the duplicate bots exists, we wanna look for bots from our all bots that are not in the duplicate bots because if they're not in the duplicate bots, that means they only showed up once and it's a unique value which means that it could be a high and it could be a low that's making a sandwich attack. So if we find that, we append all of those into our sandwiches. And now we have the hash of all the potential sandwiches and we return that back to the main function, right? And that's just the list that we created up here we're appending to. So that's all our new algorithm is really doing. It's pretty simple. It's just saying, hey, like, most of these bots are gonna be calculating this automatically based on an API. They should all have similar gas prices from the same bot and we don't care about those. All we care about is a two from pair with a higher gas price to front run our victim followed by a two from pair with a lower gas price to make our profit. So once we do all that, we're also gonna print before we come out of here just all of the all bots, like every single unique transaction hash for a bot so you can look at those further if you want to see what those are. Good data to have. Now, once this sandwich gets returned back into the main, all we're gonna do is say, okay, so out of all our possible sandwiches, we called that find sandwich and we got back our sandwiches. Now, for each sandwich and sandwiches, we're just gonna print out in green, delicious sandwich found. And then in yellow, we're gonna print out the transaction hash of the sandwich. So that's really all this program is doing. You could check out all the code, I have it linked below, but those are all the changes. So you could either go through it and implement all the changes yourself incrementally and play with it, or you can just use the code and make note of everything and make note of the changes of the different types of things within Python. So now what we can do is we can run a live attack on the blockchain, so let's do that we're at the mercy of whatever decides to come through our current blocks. That way we're not just using fake data. We're using real live data when we're testing things and not screwing around. Looks like we actually did get something on the first run. Um, so we have three bot transactions, two potential sandwiches. So let's take a look at those and let's see what we got here. Here's our transaction hash. All right. So it looks like we have a swap of 0.23 ether on Uniswap 
for a thousand two two six sell token. Perfect. So that looks, you know, pretty good. So let's grab part of this from address that we're going to search within block eight six six. And then within here, we have 114 transactions. So not a lot of transactions in this block, but let's search through here. So we'll say control V, we'll check this first page. We got nothing, nothing on the second page. And the third page looks like we got a hit. Also something to note about Firefox, I have been running into issues where I'll search with the search feature and it's on the page and it doesn't find it. I ran into that a minute ago and had to retape because I was like, where is this within the block? And it ended up just being Firefox was broken. So I opened the one within this VM instead. But this should be our buy order. This should be our sell order. And this is our victim on Uniswap. So let's check that out. That should be the transaction we just saw, which was 0.2 Ether for the 1226, correct. And let's verify our sell order here. So we got, and in here, yeah, 1226 selling and it's 0.25 we're getting back. So that is our sell order and our profit, perfect. So as you can see, it did work live. Now, if I run this a bunch of times, it might not find anything for a while. And that doesn't mean it's failing. It just means that the particular transactions within that block weren't part of the signature we were looking for. They weren't bot activity. Or in this case, we had one bot transaction but we didn't see any sandwich attacks because it was just, you know, a bot that had, you know, duplicate non-unique gas values because it was probably pulling them from the current gases and parsing them out. So let's see what we get back on the next one. And we got another one that might be a sandwich attack, but you might run this 10 times and not get anything back. So just think about that. But for the most part, I usually get sandwich attacks back with this with the occasional one-off transaction that meets the signature, but is not quite a sandwich attack. Now, hopefully this was useful to you in the future. We'll build this out a little bit and start making it more automated so we don't have to keep hitting enter, make it object oriented and start cataloging all those sandwich attacks and try to make some data correlations with that. But either way, like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody sharing this out.